Hello everybody, my name is Elisa Gutierrez Jimenez and this is my pro final project on Jean-Auguste Dominique Ong. I had a really great time researching him and I've always admired um, Ong's work and had a lot of fun mimicking his style. Let's begin. Ong was born August 29th, 1780 and died January 14th, 1867 at the age of 86. His father at an early age was very encouraging to have Ong take lessons in drawing and music. Ong attended various art academies through Rome and France and found he wanted to be a historical painter of the ancient Roman and classical Greek stories. He even mastered the, and playing the violin. Now let's start with his first artwork I want to present. This is the Grand Odalisque of 1814. It's an oil on canvas, and Ong was 34 years old when he painted this. We can see as he starts to shift from that neoclassicism to romanticism with the classical forms, but also a mix of mannerism with the anatomy as her elongated arms, back, and legs look very unnatural. I'd also like to include while Ong was in Rome, Ong took a lot of inspiration from many of the Renaissance masters, like Titian, and his Venus of Urbino. Both were commissioned for two households. The one on the right, Ong's, was commissioned by Napoleon's sister, Queen of Naples, for her bedroom. And the other one was commissioned for husband and wife. When I look at both of them, one seems very warmth and inviting, and the other one seems cold and distant. I want to now introduce the next piece. The Vow of Louis XIII, 1824, is a oil on canvas, and Ingress was 44 years old when he was commissioned by France's Ministry of Interior. And after he completed the painting, he presented it at the Salon of 1825, where he would be awarded the Cross of the Legion of Honor by Charles X of France. I included a photo of Louis XIII at the bottom for reference. We saw with the first painting, Ong is not afraid to using reference photos. Here we can see Raphael, one of the masters of the Renaissance. We can compare the two paintings as the Virgin is holding Jesus in his arms. And there's two little angels at the bottom of both paintings as well. Ong uses a very muted color palette in his. He thought that color should come second in the painting and that it really wasn't that important. Ong was really interested in painting historical events and stories about ancient Greek and ancient Roman life. Ong loved doing these historical paintings. During this time, neoclassicalism is based on ancient Greek and ancient Roman stories of different lore and events which is why I wanted to include this one as I introduce the next painting. The Martyrdom of St. Symphorian is what Ong believes to be his masterpiece. As he presented this painting to the Salon of 1834, it was harshly criticized by many. The bishop who commissioned Ong left him a very detailed program of everything he wanted in the painting, but Ong, being the Virgo he was, was able to follow it very closely. And I included the practice painting of some of the figures. Now, our next painting is going to be at the Turkish Baths, 1852, which is an oil on canvas painting that Ong was 72 years old when he completed. It is in the Tondo shape that he modified in 1862. We can see a number of references from older paintings that he's done, and Ong, using those references, he also used the 19th century academic arts, neoclassicism, and a lot of the mannerists that we can see with the elongated backs, awkward poses, and here this the first one is the bather, what we see is the woman sitting with the sitar. The other sketches we have as well and the woman who's sitting with her body facing the viewer. This painting is based on the Orientalism as well, too. I wanted to include a little tidbit about portraits. Ong really disliked painting them. 
because it distracts him from the important work of painting these historical paintings he's known for. But these are just a couple of beautiful portraits that he has done. And it's just crazy that he would think that these weren't important. The first painting that we see is the Napoleon one of 1806. And this is what brought him to the mainstream. I wanted to include something goofy. If you've ever seen Parks and Rec, there's an episode where you've seen this little portrait on the wall to the right. It's actually a self-portrait that was edited of Aang when he was 84 years old. And I'll read the quote. Marcus Everett Langley was Pawnee's greatest lawyer at the turn of the century. His nickname was Old Stoneface because of his steely demeanor and because he got into an accident at the rock quarry and dynamite blew up in his face. Another thing I wanted to include was the influences of his pupils and modern art. As you can see, I included a Pablo Picasso and a Henry Matisse, both these pictures and paintings. And he even influenced a young Degas. In 1855, he met Ang, who said to him, draw lines, young man, and still more lines, both from life and from memory, and you will become a great artist. And, which is why he influenced me. I ended up choosing his Virgin Adoring the Host of 1852. The subject matter is the Virgin Mary, and in the back we can see Louis IX of France and his queen consort. It's an oil on canvas, very neoclassicism, and there's actually an earlier variation of this painting from 1841 he did. This painting influenced what I ended up painting in the end for my final project. I hope you can see the similarities as well as differences in both. Her grandmother blesses the universe is what I titled my painting. It is about Spider Grandmother. She is from Hopi mythology and she was the creator god of the first humans and the earth with the help of Tawa, the sun god. She is a wise leader and is a representational of all good things. I chose her because I wanted to show that many Native American stories can be painted in the neoclassical style. And here I wanted to compare the two side by side. So you can see it was the same pose, but I added some different motifs to it. I added extra arms because she's a spider. I also added that Southwestern background and I also added two, no, it was three Southwestern pots at the top of the columns and in her hand. Such a fun project and I really hope I can do this with other artists. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching my presentation.